Good afternoon and welcome. We're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm Dr. Howard, the Department of Music Chair, and we are excited to have Kelsey Johnson with her junior organ recital. We're also very excited to actually have an event this semester. Uh, that is possible, of course, because of the Hauptwerk organ that you see behind me that Kelsey will be playing. This is a portable digital organ that is a recording of actual pipe organs that go into the software and allow you to play it back. So this uh, evening you're going to hear five different organs. Kelsey will talk about each of those before she plays them. And uh, hopefully you'll be able to hear it. This is an experiment. There is a very famous pipe organ outside in San Diego, but that's the only one I know about. So this is a pretty unique thing, and it's the first time that we've done it here, so we're excited about that. But uh, feel free to uh, get hot chocolate and donuts if you get cold, even, even throughout the concert. Kelsey says that's okay, because it's out of her line of sight. So. <laughs> but uh, without any further ado, let's welcome Kelsey Johnson. Welcome everyone, and thank you for joining me tonight for my junior organ recital, Andante, A Stroll Through Europe. In this recital, we will be looking at different composers, music styles, and organs throughout Europe. Feel free to grab a donut and some hot chocolate. Let's begin. Georg Böhm was a German Baroque organist and composer. He began taking music lessons early in age from his father. Little is known of Berm's early years, but in 1697, Berm applied for a position as the organist of the principal church of Lunenburg. There he had the chance to tutor young musicians, including the young Johann Sebastian Bach. Practically no direct evidence exists to prove that Bach studied under Berm, yet this apprenticeship is extremely likely. Carl Philipp Emanuel Bach, Bach's son, wrote in a letter in 1775 claiming his father loved and studied Berm's music, and a correction in his note shows that his first thought was to say that Berm was Johann Sebastian Bach's teacher. Berm and Bach became friends, and in 1727, Bach named none other than Berm as his northern agent for the sale of keyboard partitas number no. 2 and 3. Berm is mainly known for his compositions for organ, and his most important contribution to North German keyboard music is the chorale partita, a large-scale composition consisting of several variations on a particular chorale melody. He effectively invented the genre, writing several partitas of varying lengths and on diverse tunes, which later composers also took up, most notably J.S. Bach. Berm's Preludium in C major is a fugue and prelude showing the complexity of each distinct voice. The organ being used is the Schnitke organ of the Hort of St. Michael's Kirk in Zwolle. The organ was completed in 1721 by the sons of the famous Arp Schnitke. The city gave the resources and even the Catholic Church to help finish the organ. It was built as a Baroque organ and then, over time, it was adapted and altered to fit the fashions. And finally, in the 20th century, it was restored to its original situation. This is Georg Böhm's Preludium in C Major.
Our next stop is in Italy. Guillermo Frescobaldi was a musician of the Duchy of Ferrara in what is now Northern Italy. He was one of the most important composers of keyboard music in the late Renaissance and early Baroque periods. A child prodigy, Frescobaldi studied under Luzasco Luzaschi in Ferrara, but was influenced by many composers. Frescobaldi's printed collections contain some of the most influential music of the 17th century. In his early 20s, Frescobaldi left his native Ferrara for Rome. While abroad, Frescobaldi was elected on 21st July 1608 to succeed Ercole Paschini as organist of St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. He also enjoined Enzo's Bentivoglio's musical establishment after the later settled in Rome in 1608. Although he grew estranged from his patron after an affair with a young woman. A scandal involving competition between Ventioglio and the Medici family eventually forced him to leave his position. Guillermo moved to Florence, Italy, into the service of the Grand Duke of Tuscany, a Medici. During his sojourn there, he was the highest paid musician and served as the organist of the Florence Baptistry for a year. Frescobaldi returned to Rome, where he continued working at St. Peter's Basilica. His work influenced Johann Jakob Froberger, Johann Sebastian Bach, Henry Purcell, and countless other major composers. Pieces from his celebrated collection of liturgical organ music, Fiori Musicali, were used as models of strict counterpoint as late as the 19th century. Frescobaldi is important for his numerous innovations, particularly in the field of tempo. Unlike his predecessors, he would include in his pieces sections in contrasting tempo, and some of his publications include a lengthy preface detailing tempo-related aspects of performance. In effect, he made a compromise between the ancient white mensural notation with a rigid tactus and the modern notion of tempo. Although this idea was not new, Frescobaldi was among the first to popularize it in keyboard music. Contemporary critics acknowledge Frescobaldi as one of the greatest trendsetters of keyboard music of their time. Frescobaldi's staccatas and canzonas, with their sudden changes and contrasting sections, may have inspired the celebrated Stilus Fantasticus of the North German organ school. The organ that will be used in this piece was built in the 16th century by the famous Antignadi family in the Church of St. Carlo in Brescia, Italy. Italian organs tend to only have one manual, and some of the stops are split between the bass and treble to give the performers more options. Another unique thing about Italian organs is that each rank of the mixture is controlled by its own stop, so you can get a lot of variety of color. Please enjoy Guillermo Frescobaldi's Canzona Cuarta.
We now arrive in Spain with a piece written by Johann Caspar Kerl. Kerl was a German Baroque organist and composer. Born in Germany as the son of an organist, Kerl showed outstanding musical abilities at an early age and was taught by Giovanni Valentini at Vienna. Kerl became one of the most acclaimed composers of his time, known both as a gifted composer and an outstanding teacher. He worked at Vienna, Munich, and Brussels, and also traveled widely. His pupils included Agostino Stefani, Franz Xaver Muschauser, and Johann Pachelbel. Although Kerl was a well-known and influential composer, many of his works are currently lost. The surviving oeuvre shows Carol's mastery of the Italian concerted style, employed in almost all of his masses and his highly developed contrapuntal technique. Carol's had a big influence on later composers as well. Johann Pachelbel studied Carol's style, which is particularly obvious from his organ Canchones, which are reminiscent of Carol's ostinato works. He may have also studied the Baroque era, Johann Sebastian Bach and Georg Friedrich Handel both studied Kerl's works as well as employed aspects of Kerl's music to their own works. Kerl was German, but his piece, Battaglia, is typical of Spain's Baroque music. The two best-known keyboard pieces by Kerl are both programmatic, descriptive pieces. Battaglia is a descriptive piece in C major, over 200 bars long and featuring numerous repeats on fanfare-like themes. It is also attributed to Juan Bautista Cabanillas. A battalia is a form of Renaissance and Baroque program music imitating a battle. Spanish organs were quite small and featured split keyboards to give the performer more options. The Jordi Bosch organ of Santani Mallorca was built in 1762 for the monastery of Santo Domingo and Palma. It was moved to Mallorca in 1837. There are two divided manuals with 40 ranks of pipes. Listen for the loud mixture used at the end. This is the loudest mixture in the world with over 25 ranks of pipes. That's 1,104 pipes for a single stop. This is Johann Kasper Karl's Battaglia. Thank you. 
Johann Sebastian Bach was a German composer and musician of the Baroque period. Since the 19th century Bach revival, he has been generally regarded as one of the greatest composers of all time. The Bach family already counted several composers when Johann Sebastian was born as the last child of a city musician in Eisenach. After being orphaned at age 10, he lived for five years with his eldest brother, Johann Christoph, after which he continued his musical formation in Lüneburg. Starting in 1726, he published some of his well-known keyboard and organ music. In Leipzig, as had happened during some of his earlier positions, he had difficult relations with his employer, a situation that was little remedied when he was granted the title of court composer by his sovereign Augustus, elector of Saxony and king of Poland, in 1736. Bach and Rich already established German styles through his mastery of counterpoint, harmonic and motivic organization, and his adaptation of rhythms, forms, and textures from abroad, particularly from Italy and France. Throughout the 18th century, Bach was primarily valued as an organist. The piece I will be playing was written by Bach for the organ with two manuals and pedal. Ach bleib bei uns, er Jesu Christ, translates to Lord Jesus Christ, abide with us. It is a set of six different choral preludes published in 1747 in Zella St. Blasi. At least five preludes of the compilation are transcribed from movements in Bach's church cantatas, mostly chorale cantatas he had composed around two decades earlier. These six chorales provide an approachable version of the music of the cantatas through the more marketable medium of keyboard transcriptions. Virtually all Bach's cantatas were unpublished in his lifetime. The organ I will be using is the Gulpfried Silbermann organ, completed in 1735 in the city of Freiburg. Freiburg is unique because there are four Silbermann organs still in existence. This one was representative of Silbermann's mature style at the end of his life. It has a great gravitas in the sound, with full 16 foot and even a 32 foot in the pedal. These are the types of things that Bach was constantly asking for when he would look at new organs built in central Germany. Enjoy Johann Sebastian Bach's Ach bleibai uns er Jesu Christ.
We end our tour in France. Léon Boulmen was a French composer known for a small number of compositions for organ. Boulmen was born in Einzenham, Alsace, the son of a pharmacist. In 1871, at the age of nine, he entered the École de Musique Classique et Religieuse in Paris, where he studied with its director, Gustave Lefebvre, and with Judin Gigot. There, Bowman won first prizes in piano, organ, counterpoint, fugue, plain song, and composition. After his graduation in 1881, Bowman was hired as the choir organist at the Church of St. Vincent de Paul in the 10th arrondissement of Paris, and six years later he became cantor and organiste titulaire, a position he held until his early death. Bullman died in 1897, most likely from tuberculosis. He was only 35. During the 16 years of his professional life, Bullman composed about 160 pieces in all genres. Bullman exhibits a turn-of-the-century post-romantic aesthetic. His best-known composition is Suite Gothique, now a staple of the organ repertoire, especially its concluding toccata, with a dramatic minor theme and a rhythmic emphasis that made it popular even in Bullman's day. I'm using the Cavaille Col organ located in Metz, France, and built in 1903. Cavaille Col was a French organ builder. He has the reputation of being the most distinguished organ builder of the 19th century. He pioneered innovations in the art and science of organ building that permeated throughout the profession and influenced the course of organ building and organ composing through the early 20th century. The organ reform movement sought to return organ building to a more Baroque style. But since the 1980s, Gavaya Cole's designs have come back into fashion. Please enjoy Leon Bullman's Sweet Gothic. And thank you for coming along with me on Andante, A Stroll Through Europe.
Thank you all for coming. Please have more hot chocolate and donuts and have socially distant conversation. Hey, how are you?